can't swim still, so going for my morning runs. If you are a hardcore swim fan like I am, then today, today is gonna be a good video. to do a video on this for a really, really long time. So this video is the origin story and some of the highlights and some of my personal experiences with the coolest professional swimming competition that has ever happened. This is all about the duel in the pool. This competition was a made for television competition. It started with the rivalry between the United States and Australian swimming. There's always been like a big Olympic rivalry between those two countries. And in 2003, Australia swimming and the United States swimming decided to host a professional duel meet to be televised across the world. It's basically the equivalent of the Ryder Cup in golf for swimming. Essentially an NCAA swimming kind of event where you took the best male and female swimmers from the United States and you took the best male and female swimmers from Australia and you pitted them together in one winner takes all duel meet competition. The first duel in the pool took place all the way back in 2003 at my favorite pool in the entire world, the Indianapolis Natatorium. And fun fact, that was the first time that I ever laid eyes on what is now my favorite pool. I remember watching Michael Phelps swim the Hunter Butterfly and just missed the world record. He missed the world record by three one hundredths of a second. I'd never seen anything like it, this kind of event, this kind of spectacle. The United States won, they defeated Australia, the final score was 185 to 78 points. Men and women on the same team scoring points together. So the next duel in the pool competition took place in 2005 out in Earth. Irvine, California. That was one of the first swimming competitions that I really remember watching on TV. I remember watching Ian Crocker dominate the men's hundred butterfly. I remember watching Michael Phelps anchor the 4x100 medley relay, beating Australia by just like a ridiculous margin. Americans were favored coming into this second duel in the pool, but no one would have figured that it would be this dominating of a performance final score was 190 to 102. The next duel in the pool competition was in 2007, and I will never forget watching this event on TV. I remember specifically watching Brendan Hansen, the American breaststroker, Olympic breaststroker that I like idolized, split a 59-6 on the medley relay in Sydney, Australia, taking United States to the win. And like at the time, that blew my mind. Like it was so cool watching this group of Olympians, guys like Aaron Pearsall, guys like Brendan Hansen, winning these events for the United States in a final score of 181.5 to 129.5. And I'll never forget watching that relay, watching some of those races, to me it was just like, oh, it was so exciting. And it was something that was different because it wasn't the Olympic Games, it was just for pride, right? It was just one country competing against another country to see who is the overall collective best team. And it was always really, really exciting. 2009 was a very interesting year and an interesting duel in the pool. It was the last swimming competition ever to have the full body polyurethane floaty super Super suits. This meet took place in December of 2009 and then January 1st, 2010, those suits were illegal. It was also the first duel where they switched to short course meters. Prior to 2009, they did all the meets in the long course Olympic format, but in 2009, they were like, ah, we're gonna go short course meters from now on. They changed it up a little bit. It was no longer the United States versus Australia. It became the United States versus some European all-stars. The United States won once again, final score 185 to 74. 2011, Atlanta, Georgia, the fifth duel in the pool ever, the very first race of the competition, the women's 4x100 medley relay. Olympic champion Natalie Coughlin starts off with the hunter back setting an American record, then Rebecca Sony dives in to do the breaststroke leg, Dana Vollmer swims fly, she crushes it, and then a young Missy Franklin dives in to anchor. Missy Franklin is gonna put up a world record to start this duel in the pool. Bam. New world record. 
Oh, that was an exciting event. Final score, United States wins 181.5 to 80.5. Now this brings us to 2013, the sixth ever duel in Glasgow, Scotland. This was my first duel in the pool. This was the first time that I ever had the opportunity to represent Team USA at this super awesome, televised, awesome packaged event. And I was by no means like the first person picked for the team. I was probably one of the last people chosen for the team. You have to understand at this point in time in my career, I wasn't an Olympian. I was barely on the US national team. And it was the year after the London Olympics. So all of the best American breaststrokers had basically retired. You had Brendan Hansen, Eric Chanteau, Clark Burkle, Scott Welts, all four of the great American breaststrokers that swam at the Olympic Games the previous summer had all retired. So they were just trying to fill slots for this team and I was lucky enough to, to just to be on this team. So this meet, I cannot overstate how crazy and insane this competition was. This was one of the most exciting swim meets to ever happen in the history of the sport, period, end of story. The United States had always won the duel in the pool and had always won by a very sizable margin. We were undefeated and it was never very close. But in Scotland, it was razor thin all the way through. Team Europe was winning events, then the USA was winning events. We'd won two, three an event, then Europe would one, two, three an event. It was back and forth, back and forth. Can the US sweep? It is one, two, and a tie for second. They did the it. The United States does sweep and gets all nine points to tie the duel. Now the competition ended with two relays, the female four by 100 freestyle relay and the male four by 100 freestyle relay. And the meet was tied going into these two relays. Either the United States or Europe were gonna win both of the relays and then win the meet, or it was gonna be split and there was gonna have to be a tiebreaker relay. It was like, We'd never seen anything like this in swimming before. So the female four by 100 freestyle relay swims. The United States give it a great effort, but Team Europe wins. I mean, they broke a world record. It was the fastest relay that had ever been swim before. So they win. So now to tie the meet, to keep the United States from losing and breaking their winning streak, the, the American men had to win this upcoming relay to put the meet into overtime, to keep us from losing. Not only was there the pressure of all of that riding on these guys' shoulders, but this is one of the most stacked relay competitions I'd ever seen before. Leading off Team Europe was Yannick Agnel, who won the Olympics in the 200 meter freestyle the year before. Leading off the Americans was Jimmy Fegan, Olympian and world champion. Going second for the Americans was Anthony Irvin. Everybody knows Tony, one of the best sprint freestylers in history Racing Irvin was Great Britain's two-time Olympian Adam Brown. Going third for the United States was one of my buddies, one of the best underwater swimmers in history, Tom Shields. And racing him for Team Europe was Ben Proud, world champion, 50 butterfly, one of the best 50 freestylers who's ever lived. He also might have the best biceps in swimming. Just a side note, I mean, the guy's pretty jacked. And then anchoring the relays is Olympic champion Colin Jones for the Americans against Robbie Renwick, Team Europe's Commonwealth Games champion. This relay was so stacked, I couldn't, I couldn't emphasize that enough. They must win this relay to send the duel to a tiebreak. The gun goes off, the first leg swim, it's dead even. The second guys dive in the water, Team Europe has a bit of a lead at this point, about a half body length lead, until Tom Shields uses his ridiculous black magic underwaters and kicks out past Ben Proud like a champion. So good underwater though. Shields is unbelievable off the walls. Colin Jones dives in for the final leg of the relay, he's a body length ahead of Team Europe. He's kicking so hard, it's almost like he's a, it's like he's a speedboat moving through the water there's this giant tidal wave behind behind him on the first 50 i'm like oh my god don't kick too hard don't kick too hard and the u.s men answer putting the meat into overtime tying up the meat keeping our winning streak alive at this point everyone on the team is on deck basically behind the blocks chanting team usa a tie breaking relay of a four by 50 medley mixed relay so two guys two girls on each team this relay is close. It's nail-bitingly close, stroke for stroke with one another. Everything is riding on this moment right here. 
And then, boom, Simone Manuel touches the wall, out touching the European team, winning the meet. All the United States swimmers are on deck, jumping up and down, celebrating, going crazy. Like, we're all there behind the blocks, hugging each other, embracing one another. Whew. That was, without a doubt, one of the most exciting experiences of my life, one of the most exciting swim meets of my life. I think it will go down in swimming history as one of the most exciting and coolest swimming competitions that's ever happened. And you would think that just being on that team and being a part of that, I would walk away from that competition feeling very fulfilled, feeling happy, feeling proud. But the reality was, I wasn't. I left that competition, the most exciting competition that I'd ever been a part of, feeling like an imposter, feeling like I let my team down. I felt like a failure because you know how many points I scored at that meet? You know how many points I scored for the team? Zero. I scored a total of zero points for Team USA at that meet and I was devastated. You see, as I said earlier, I was one of the last additions to that meet. I'd never been on a team where just 12 months prior, my teammates were winning gold medals at the Olympics. Like I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. And my performances showed. I got last place. I did not score a point for Team USA. And I was devastated and extremely hard on myself. I never forgot what it felt like to be a failure and what it felt like to let everyone on my team down. <sighs> Getting a little emotional here. <laughs> and then two years later, Duel in the Pool 2015 took place in my all-time favorite pool, the IUPUI Natatorium in Indianapolis, the place where the Duel in the Pool first started 12 years prior. I once again was extended an invitation to represent Team USA against Team Europe in Indy and I was motivated. I had been preparing for this. I was ready to swim at this competition. The feeling that I had before the men's 200 breaststroke, I was so confident and so certain that I was gonna do well because I took that failure from two years prior and turned it into fuel. The guy that I was swimming right next to was Daniel Geerta of Hungary, who is one of one, one guy that I've looked up to for a long time, one of my breaststroke idols. Geerta won, won the 200 meter breaststroke at the London Olympics the year before. So this is the reigning Olympic champion and current world record holder in the 200 breaststroke swimming to my left. And I was psyched. My heart rate was pumping, just thumping duh, 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 as I stood on the blocks. It's like I'd already started racing before I even got on the blocks. I knew that Geerta was such a good back happer that I had to take off and get a lead on him going into the final 50. And oh my god, the last 25, when I got to the last 25, I was struggling. I was like, just get to the wall. Get to the wall. Don't let him beat me. Don't let him beat me. Just make it. Also ranks five and six and the touch goes to Cody Miller. I set the American record. I was one of the top five fastest swimmers in that event in history. It was like everything just came together. And from that point on, the remainder of the meet, I was riding high. The 100 breaststroke the next day, fully confident. I went out the first 50 as fast as I possibly could. Once again, I was swimming next to Geerta. I took off that first 50 and never let go. The Indiana native looking to double up on the breaststroke. He does in a 56.43. I set another American record. Whew, man, that was such a fun experience. And Team USA went on to win the meet once again. It was a much closer meet, not nearly as close as in 2013 when we won by one point, but the final score was 155 to 107. This time I felt proud of my performances. I felt proud to represent the United States because I felt like I contributed, like I did something worthy of that flag that I was wearing on my cap. I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls with club teams around the country and around the world lately. And one question I got asked just yesterday was, if you could change one thing about your swimming career, if you have one regret, what is it and what would you do differently? And my honest answer to that question is nothing. I wouldn't change anything because in my lowest moments and in my darkest points and in my biggest failures, like at the 2013 duel in the pool, if I didn't have those failures and if I didn't have those moments, 
I would have never had the real motivation to work my butt off to get myself into a position of success. I think that I personally needed those moments of despair and I needed those failures before I was ready to set those American records and to win those Olympic medals. I don't know, I just, I don't think that people should live with regrets. I think that there have definitely been times when I was ashamed of my failures, but as I look back, ultimately, it was those moments that led me to where I am today. I hope that you enjoyed me telling my swimming stories. I love talking about swimming history. I love diving into this kind of stuff. So if people like this, I'll make more videos like this. As always, make sure you guys are following me on social media, at SwimMiller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my videos with your swimmer friends. That really helps me. Cody Miller merch is available at CodyMillerSwim.com. Um, I've got my weekly podcast. Go subscribe to that on Spotify, iTunes, where, wherever you get your podcasts. And until my next video, I will see you guys later. Ooh. Ooh.